first of all, I want to say that everyone deserves to be happy. You know, everyone deserves to achieve all their dreams and goals, to become absolutely happy, and, and really just overcome any kind of suffering. I don't care what kind of suffering you have, whether it's illness, whether it's financial difficulties, whether it's relationships, everybody deserves to have that ability to somehow change that, that karma, that destiny that they have, and really live a truly joyful and fulfilling life. Um, what I'm going to share with you today is, um, is a concrete and simple uh, daily practice that you can do in the privacy of your own home and really, like, basically um, turn, turn your engine on every day. Really, you know, uh, uh, energize yourself, you know, revitalize yourself, uh, have tremendous vitality, happiness, joy, and really be able to give 100% to everything that you do in your life, including spending time with your children. Um, go and you know at your job really be, enjoy and give 100% to your job uh, give 100% to your spouse whatever it is that you're trying to do Buddhism really is all about becoming the best possible you that you can become so we're not trying to change anybody you know whatever characteristics that you have in your life the, those, those are wonderful what we want to do is enhance those characteristics so you're the best you that you can possibly be what is a Buddha um, probably a lot of people ask that question is what really what does it, what, what it does Buddha mean um, many of us probably think about Buddhism as this fat statue that somebody worships. That's not really it at all. Buddha is nothing more than a condition in life that we all have. Basically, in Buddhism, everyone is equal. There is no supreme or divine being in Buddhism. And that's what it teaches anyway. Um, so we don't kind of worship outside of ourselves. We kind of like worship the, 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 our own lives, you know, because our, all of our lives are, are worthy of respect because we all have the Buddha nature. The only law that we have, there's no like rules, regulations, you know, uh, or commandments in Buddhism. Really the law that we base our lives on is causality, cause and effect, which I think we all in this room agree that we base our lives on cause and effect, right? We go to work so we can get paid. If we don't go to work, what happens? Probably not going to get paid very long <laughs> before they're going to cut our paychecks off. So we're really basing our lives really all um, on, on cause and effect. So if you really, really think about it, why wouldn't religion be the same? You know, why wouldn't really we be in charge of our own destiny um, based on the causes that we make in our daily lives? Um, the Lotus Sutra. Uh, I wanted to talk about the, the Lotus Sutra uh, for a moment. Um, actually, Buddhism came from um, a man by the name of Shakyamuni. Has anybody heard, heard of the, the name Shakyamuni? I read it. Have you? How about Siddhartha? Hmm. Gautama? One of, one of those names? Okay, he, he, went, he went by a few. Actually, um, what he was, is, was he was a prince. He was very wealthy, lived in a castle, had everything going for himself. Um, you know, looked over the castle walls and saw, wow, my life is great, but what's going on outside of the castle isn't so pretty. You know, he saw death, he saw disease, he saw famine, he saw all kinds of things going on outside of the castle walls, but yet his life was, you know, just wonderful. He had everything he needed, plenty of food, clothes, and everything else. And that really bothered Shakyamuni. In fact, it shocked Shakyamuni. So he was really determined that he wanted to find out how he could help people to um, stop suffering from what they call the four sufferings. Uh, birth, old age, sickness, and death. Basically the process of life from birth all the way to death. And, you know, bas basically being able to live every moment of our lives valuably, you know, in the best possible way that we can. So that was Shakyamuni's goal. So what he did is he actually left his wife and his, and, and his one child, and he went out and was in search of answers. He tried all kinds of austere practices from starvation, mind control, all these different things. And what he, um, what he um, actually uh, find, finally ended up doing is he ended up um, uh, meditating under a Bodhi tree where he uh, uh, eventually uh, attained enlightenment. So um, Shakyamuni... This enlightenment was just absolutely incredible. It was tremendously happy, joyful. Um, it was just like electric shock going through his body. He just felt so alive, so one with the universe. Felt just so wonderful that he wanted to teach all people how to attain the same state of life. So that's what he did. He sought out through his life for 50 years. He taught Buddhist teachings to um, teach people um, you know, about this enlightenment that he had realized. So the first 42 years of his life, he taught a, a lower teachings, um, teachings 
that um, I, I want to call like inferior teachings, but they were all to bring people's capacity of learning up to prepare them for the last eight years of his life when he taught the Lotus Sutra, the highest teaching. So just like going through kindergarten, you don't start at 12th grade, you start at kindergarten, you work your way up. Well, that's what he was doing. He was slowly teaching the people, and as their capacity grew, he finally prepared them for the Lotus Sutra, what he taught, which he taught in the last eight years of his life. Um, and uh, he actually prophesied that in the fifth 500 year period after his death, some would be, be born, and he gave the exact location somewhere in the east, I don't remember exactly what it was, and that uh, someone would be born to actually be able to um, uh, help people to become happy for 10,000 years and more, to provide an actual vehicle so that people could really attain their own happiness in their lives. Um, so anyway, that's about Chakra Pumachumanu, but, but the Lotus Sutra's primary, primary focus was, um, was that each human being, regardless of race, color, or creed, you know, has the potential for absolute happiness in their lives. So what we do as Nichiren Buddhists is um, recite from this uh, two excerpts from uh, the second and the sixteenth chapter of the Lotus Sutra every morning and evening. The whole process takes five minutes, folks. Five minutes, that's it. Five minutes in the morning, five minutes at night once you become proficient in the pronunciation. It's in Chinese Sanskrit, so it's a little, you know, difficult to learn it at the beginning. But once you get it down pat, it takes you about five minutes. And then we also chant um, Nami Arunge Kyo. But before I go more into that, um, I wanted to uh, discuss these uh, worlds that I was uh, talking about. Um, the ten worlds, um, they, they, this is a really, really important point. So basically, in our lives, we have all these different pot potentials. At the bottom, we have hell. At the top, we have Buddhahood, and we have a lot in between. So, you know, for example, we could um, have a death of a loved one, which really could be hellish, right? I mean, let's say you're really close to your grandmother and your grandmother dies. That really impacts your life, or a loved one, or, or maybe your child gets sick, you know, and you don't know what to do, and somehow, you know, you just have not been able to get your, your child to be well. So that's really like a hellish life condition. Um, um, and then, um, the, the, then there's hunger. Uh, hell, hunger, animality, anger. Anger, for example, is another life condition that we have. Say, for example, uh, we go to, uh, go to uh, our co co night nighttime college and uh, we get an, an F on our math test. We're really angry. Oh my gosh, this teacher is so hard. She's unfair. Um, you know, they, you really start blaming the teacher about your F rather than looking at yourself and saying, you know, maybe I should have studied a little bit more. So, you know, there's two ways to look at it, the negative way, and then there's the positive way. Um, so, basically, throughout our day, uh, give, for an example, you know, we get up in the morning, we're a little groggy, right? For, what's the first thing you guys usually go for? Kathleen goes for coffee, right? So, you get a little stimulant in your blood, so, ooh, you're getting a little, getting a little bit more awake. And then you say, wow, a little music wouldn't be bad, right? So you go over and you switch the radio on, and all of a sudden some, some nice music's playing. So now that's affecting your mood a little bit. Then uh, you take a shower. Ah, now you feel refreshed and clean and ready to go, right? And then you get in your car to go to work. <laughs> Not feeling so good anymore. You're dreading going to work, so you're driving down the road. But again, your music rescues you, rescues you, and you turn the music on, you're listening to your music, you're enjoying your music, and all of a sudden, somebody cuts you off and runs you into a ditch. You just went from the world of heaven all the way probably down to the world of anger, right? In, in just a New York minute, because something externally impacted your life, right? Um, maybe you go to work, and you walk into work, and you're, you're running late for a meeting, so you really are paranoid, oh my gosh, I'm late, and you're, you had a meeting, you know, right, right, right when you get to work. So you walk into the meeting, and every, instead of, you know, everybody going like, John, you're late, they go, they're all laughing, they're joking, they're, everybody's having a grand time, and you slipped in without even being noticed. Everybody's laughing, and how does that affect your life? It's an external stimulus, right? So it impacts your life positively, because everybody's laughing and joyful, okay? So this is... Um, what we call the Ten Worlds, or actually in Buddhism it's called Ichin and Sanzen, which means 3,000 realms in a momentary state of life. So that we go through these life states from moment to moment based on things outside of ourselves. Now the goal in Buddhism is to be able to stabilize what we call our life state or our life condition uh, into the higher world. So we have hell, hunger, um, hell, hunger, animality, anger, humanity, heaven, 
learning, realization, bodhisattva, and Buddhahood at the top. Bodhisattva is like a very compassionate person like uh, Mother Teresa was. Everybody familiar with Mother Teresa, how compassionate she was and really tried to help people throughout her whole life. And then Buddhahood at the top. So we're going through these states all day long, bouncing back, you know, top, up, 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 constantly. So Buddhism, through chanting, nam myoho renge kyo to, to this scroll, um, uh, and, 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 and reciting the, the, the sutra, you're at, able to bring out, polish your life, bring out your highest life potential, Okay, instead of that nasty anger, that happy anger, <laughs> or that positive anger, you know, bring out that positive feeling in your life so that you're really able to make the right causes. Because when you feel good inside, you now have wisdom. When you don't feel good inside, you start doing great, crazy things. You ever seen fights start in a schoolyard, right? People talk, talking trash, and then all of a sudden, you know, a fight breaks out. But if somebody's coming from a higher state of life, and they say, you know, I really don't fight you guys, you know, why don't we talk about this? So there's, you know, it's, it's a big difference when you're in the world of hell and when you're in the world of Buddhahood, a big difference on how you're going to react and how you're going to uh, make, you know, cause and effect really work for you in a positive way. Um, uh, I want to tell you right, right off the bat that Buddhism agrees with science. In fact, uh, one popular Buddhist book stated that science is actually an introduction to Buddhism. So, Buddhism totally agrees with science. So anything that you know about science, Buddha, Buddhism is right in line with it. So, what I guess I'm trying to say is that Buddhism makes a tremendous amount of sense, even if you don't have any, any faith in it. Albert Einstein once famously said that energy is neither created nor destroyed. Albert Einstein also said that uh, if there was a, any religion that could cope with modern scientific needs, it would be Buddhism. So, eternal life and karma. Let me just explain a little bit. Buddhism teaches that Life is eternal, so it's, it's existed from the beginning of time, and it'll continue to exist into the infinite future. Um, our lives are the same. We've been around forever, and we're going to continue to be around forever. And every single lifetime, we're making life, uh, we're making um, uh, cause, causes, both positive and negative. So today's life that you're experiencing in this present moment is a reflection of all the causes that you've made since the beginning beginning of time. Well, there's really no beginning of time, but, you know, from the infant, inf or remotest past, I guess it would be the best, best phrase. Um, so, the fact that you were born into the family that you are, the job that you had, have, the, the relationships that you have, the brothers and sisters that you have, every aspect, the, 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 the health that you have, is all based on causality. And you've basically been the actor and playwright in your own play, in your own play called This Is My Life. You have created your complete destiny. And from this moment forward, whatever causes you're making in the present are going to determine, to determine your future lifetimes. You can change your karma. So say, for example, you have every single job that you get, you get a negative boss. You just can't beat it. Every, no matter where you go, or you work with negative coworkers, you have negative people. It just follows you around. Or every relationship that you have ends up being an alcoholic. You can't get away with it. You know, you, you, know, you didn't ask them right off the bat, hey, are you an alcoholic before I date you? <laughs> but, but, but you know what I'm saying. You know, all of a sudden you find yourself, every time there's alcoholism tied to your, to your family. Karma. Karma. You know, what you, really, what you, you really attract what your life condition, your life potential is. So, but the, the difference about Buddhism is through chanting Nam Myoho Renge Kyo and through practicing this Buddhism and really introducing other people, helping other people, you are changing your destiny. You're cutting away that muck that's deep embedded in your life and you're really developing that life, polishing it like a jewel, just like a, a diamond in the rough, right? It comes in a, a lump of coal, you know, and then you start shining that diamond, chipping away all the coal you get to the really, really beautiful diamond. And then on top of that, you start polishing it, polishing it day after day after day after day. Start knocking away that karma. Another analogy is, is a, a garden hose. You ever um, come out in the spring and turn your garden hose on? What happens when you turn your garden hose on? Does, Anybody? It doesn't come out. It doesn't come out or some dirt comes out, right? Yeah. A stuff, exactly. It's just like our lives. The old saying is, in with the good, out with the bad. Well, out of the garden hose comes all this muck and dirt and trash. Just like our lives, you know, we have this anger, we have this, um, 
you know, uh, lack of confidence, um, low self-esteem, whatever it is that's bothering us, we can really polish that life and really make it brilliant, just like a diamond. Um, Nam uh, Yohar I put, put, put a card on everybody's um, on desk, okay, um, uh, on, their, on your chairs. So I just wanted to go over what this actually means. This is the law of the universe. Everything in the universe is Nam Yohar Everything is a manifestation of Nam Yohar So this is the universal law. Shakyamuni, in his teachings, he taught, and I guess the, 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 all 28 chapters of the Lotus Sutra actually started with Myoho Renge Kyo. And Shakyamuni, um, I'm sorry, Nichiren Daishonin added, uh, in, in 12th century, uh, Nichiren Daishonin added Nam, which means devotion. We devote ourselves to Myoho Renge Kyo. Myoho means mystical law. Mystical not in the sense of magic, hocus pocus, but what it really is is mystical in the sense that man cannot comprehend. So for example, um, I can go over there and I can hit that light switch and the lights go on or off, depending whether, you know, turn it on or off. Now, there's a lot going on behind the scenes, right, to make that light appear, but we don't really have to understand that, right? We just need to hit the light switch. Same thing with the keys to a car. You have a piece of metal called a key, you stick it in your ignition, you turn the ignition and off you are. 3,000 miles driving to, to California, you can drive, drive across the world. Do you really need to understand anything about the car? of the car to get to where you want to go. Well, yeah, you know, maybe need to know the basics, like putting gas and oil in it. But basically, you can use that car. Well, that's the same thing as Nami Harange Kyo. You don't have to understand anything about Mitrin Buddhism. Absolutely nothing. But if you chant Nami Harange Kyo on a daily basis to this Gohon Zone, or without the Gohon Zone, because you can chant without a Gohon Zone, you will see an impact in your, in your life. It's because it's based on cause and effect. It's a law, just like gravity. It, it, it can't be denied. It is a law. So, Myoho means mystical law. Renge means symbolized by cause and effect. Um, with every cause, there's an effect, which we, we spoke to about early. It's also symbolized by the lotus flower, which is a beautiful, beautiful flower, but it grows in a murky, muddy swamp. This symbolizes the potential that we all have in our lives. We have that pain, that suffering, that hellish nature, that complaining nature, right? We all have the, 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 this, this kind of crud in, in our lives, but still the potential is always there to a beautiful flower blooming and blossoming and, and really being able to win in every aspect of our daily lives. And then kyo means sound or vibration, um, also means teachings of the Buddha. So when we chant, it sounds just like this. Nam yo ho ren ge kyo. Nam yo ho ren ge kyo. Nam yo ho ren ge kyo. So we're vibrating our lives, right? When we, when we chant. So it's not something you want to just think in your head. You actually want to verbalize it. So that's what Nam yo ho ren ge kyo means. So long and short of it is, through literal translation, Nam yo ho ren ge kyo means the devotion to the mystical law of cause and effect through sound or vibration in the Buddhist teachings. Okay? And then, um, the rhythm of the universe. This is uh, such an important, important concept. Rhythm, rhythm is important. Very, very, very important in your life. And I'll tell you why. Being at the right place at the right time is everything. I don't care how much you know. I don't care how many people that you know who know things. Being at the right place at the right time can mean winning or losing. It's so crucial. Buddhism teaches that this law of Nam Yohar Kyo is the natural rhythm of the entire universe. It is the pulse. It is the lifeblood. It is, it is the um, the um, uh, the wavelength, if you want to call it. You know, they, when you when you're trying to tune in a radio station and you finally get it to the right spot, and you can really hear the radio station well. That's you're tuned into the right spot. That's what Nam Yohar Kyo is. So I'm going to read just read it just so that you can really have an, an understanding of. Uh, how this impacts us. It says, each of us is like a microcosm, a mini cosmos or universe into ourselves. Each of us is a living entity just like the universe. We are our own little universe. The human brain is also referred to as a miniature universe of its own. This is because the brain has infinite potential. The key lies in how to draw forth that potential. When we look how the body functions, we could say that it resembles a giant pharmaceutical factory. The body produces its own drugs and medicines and has the ability to protect its own health and well-being. It is a truly wonderful microcosm. Um, our bodies not only make up the same matter as the universe, but are also governed by 
the same basic principles of generation and disintegration. They are the subject of the rhythm of life and death that pervades the cosmos. All physical laws, such as those of gravity and the conservation of en energy, also affect and operate the microcosm of each living entity. It takes the Earth 365 days, 5 hours and 49 minutes and 12 seconds to complete one revolution around the sun. There is a rigorous order to everything. Would you agree? So m imagine if somehow we, the Earth's rotation changed a little bit. What would happen? Pretty, pretty drastic consequences. Um, it's said that the human body comprises of more than 60 trillion cells. When they function each day in a well-ordered fashion, carrying out their respective jobs, we enjoy good health. The complexity and precision of the human body are mind-boggling. Even bodily functions such as perspiration that regulate body temperature when it's hot are pretty amazing when you think about it. Great trouble would arise if our planet veered even slightly from its present orbit around the sun, and nothing short of a catastrophe would result if the Earth's axis was to shift even minutely. All life on this planet would be threatened with extinction. Everything hangs in a delicate balance, governed by the strict principle that life and the vast universe are one. The same applies to each individual life, to each microcosm. Okay, and then I want to read the, the punchline, and this, this I wrote myself. Um, in each Buddhism, we align our lives, the microcosm, with the life of the universe, macrocosm. There is a precise practice that we carry out each day that harmonizes our lives with the life of the universe. We do this by chanting the phrase, Nam Myoho Renge Kyo. The practice of chanting Nam Myoho Renge Kyo was created by the founder of, the, of this Buddhism, Nichiren Daishonin in Japan in April 1253. He instructed by reciting portions of the Lotus Sutra and chanting the phrase, Nam Myoho Renge Kyo, we can vigorously infuse the microcosm of our individual lives with the life force of the macrocosm of the entire universe. If we carry out this practice regularly, each morning and evening, our life force, our, our power, our energy, the, our core, our kind of maybe soul, um, you know, the, the being of the depths of your life, or your engine, uh, is strengthened. Through this practice, we're able to manifest life's potential of wisdom, compassion, courage, and vitality on a daily basis. Now, let me ask you this, this question. Who would like to increase their wisdom, compassion, courage, and vitality on a daily basis? Anybody here? Everybody. Exactly. Exactly. So... It's almost crazy not to practice because you're just cheating yourself. You have a shortcut to really win in life, and it's just really a matter of your own choice or whether you want to take advantage of it. Um, imagine, now, now imagine if we could always be in natural rhythm in the universe. What if we as human beings could align our lives with the natural flow of life, all things? What if we could have our bodies and mind functioning as our be uh, at their best, such as health, right? Mm -hmm. People have health issues, cancer, mm -hmm. right? You know, cancer is a negative cell, right? Buddhism can really change that positive, you know, change, change your, your life so that that positive can override the negative. You know, in, in, some, in some instances, people have actually seen tumors shrink in a short period of time because you're at that nam myoho renge kyo is just take, you know, really, when you're chanting that nam myoho renge kyo, you're sending that nam myoho renge kyo to different parts of your body and really impacting that tumor and cutting it out. I am going to help as many people as I can in my lifetime. I am going to help other people to become happy. Really just overcoming, you know, over, overcoming illness because of how your, your life state is very, very, very strong. Um, with a revitalized state of life, we can give so much more in all we do. Because we feel positive, energized, and full of vigor, we are empowered to give 100% to all that we do. 100% to our family and our jobs. We can overcome any sickness or obstacles and challenges that we may face. We are able to enjoy our lives to the feel, fullest, feeling calm and at ease. And that's so, that's so important. How many people are you in right now uh, are stressed in their jobs at all? Do you have any stress at all in your job? Right? Do you have any stress of financial worries? You know, w whatever it is. You know, maybe your, your, ki your kids, you know, uh, not doing well in school. Whatever it is, every, everybody has their own stress, stressors. And, you know, if you can really chant and feel calm and at ease every day, your life is going to be that much enjoyable. Imagine if you would like, if you could hit more green lights in your life than red lights, right? You know, aren't you tired of hitting the red light? Oh, every, you know, every, you get up to 30 miles an hour, stop at a red light. Stop at another red light. Wouldn't you like to start hitting some goes? 
really going for the gusto, right? Um, uh, what if you started finding yourself at the right place at the right time for the things that you need to further your happiness? A new job, new career, improved relationships, or an improved financial situation. The sky is the limit when you chant Nam Yohar and Kyo. Life can become much more easier and manageable, and you can feel empowered to win in everything that you do. In turn, you will be able to help others do the same. So that's all I'm going to say on that, and I think we're just about done. Let me just check. Um, oh, lastly, uh, we've got we to talk about uh, the Gohonzo. Uh, I know you can't see it right now, but um, down the center of the Gohon Zone, in bold characters, this is the perfect life. This is a mirror of your life. Pick, picture this as a mirror. Down the center, it says, Nam Yo Horinge Kyo Nichiren, signed by Nichiren Daishonin from the, uh, the uh, 13th century Japan. Okay? Um, on the Gohon Zone, and it's depicted in many different goddesses and goddesses and all. I have no clue. I, I can't even read it, to be honest with you. But, but I know that all the life states that we pretend, you know, that we possess, the ten worlds, from hell to Buddhahood, are all on the go are, are all in the Gohon zone. So when we sit in front of this Gohon zone and chant Nam Myoho Renge Kyo, we're actually fusing our lives with the, the life state of the original Buddha. We're like plugging in, you know, plugging our lives in almost like a charger, battery charger, right? Plugging in to strong life force, vibrant life force. Happiness, joy, you know, everything is really magnifying in our lives. So the, having the Gohon Zone is very important, and all members of the organization can receive their own Gohon Zone. You know, we just have you, you know, attend meetings for a while, make sure that you're, you know, seriously interested in that uh, you, um, you know, are going to care for the Gohon Zone and be respective of the Gohon Zone. So everybody can receive it, and it's nominal, nominal money. It's, it's not about making, m making money for the organization. It's very, very low cost to, to, to get your own go-home zone. But the, 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 the fact is is that the go-home zone works. It works for anyone. All you really have to do is try it. So uh, I want to really close just basically saying that, you know, we're not here to, to, to tell people that they have to believe in Buddhism. Not, not here at all. Um, we are here to encourage you to say, what do I have to lose? Okay? What do I have to lose? to try practicing this Buddhism for, say, three, four months, you know, two or three months. I can tell you you're going to find out sooner than that, actual proof. The most important thing in Buddhism is actual proof. If you have no actual proof, there's nothing to believe in, right? You don't want somebody to just tell you, here, believe in Buddhism. Baloney! Don't believe in Buddhism. Practice Buddhism and see if Buddhism works. You find out for yourself whether Buddhism works or not. That's, that, that's, that's, what anybody should do, right? So, um, we have meetings available um, nationwide in uh, 23, th probably 3,000 locations throughout the United States, 12 million members in 192 countries. So, this Buddhism is moving. 192 countries. Think about that for a minute. Virtually every country on the planet Earth now has an, an SGI organization in it because this practice is working in people's lives. We have probably 100, 200,000 members in the United States. I want to say closer to 100,000 members. And it's growing, and it's a grassroots organization, so you're not going to hear about it necessarily in the newspapers and, in, and on TV and all that stuff. It's grassroots, one-to-one, -one, just like I'm doing with you. You know, really just sharing it with you on a, gra gra on a grassroots uh, level. Um, so um, you can plug into the meetings. You can try chanting on your own. Who, who is interested in trying ch chanting on your own at, at your own home? You guys? I, know, you know, I mean, in front yeah. of us no, 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 just <laughs> chanting, chanting, no, I, I, yeah, I, I'll, I'll chant for one minute just, just before we close, but, um, yeah, just chant on your own, come up with a list, I want you to come up with your best top ten, I want you to chant about whatever it is that's important, that brings out the power and passion in your prayer, I want you to chant about what really is important in your life, I want better relationships, I need a new boyfriend, I, <laughs> I'm just joking, but I'm just saying, you know, I need, I, I, I want, uh, I want more, I want to make more money in my career, I have my list, it's in the hallway, I hate it, because I usually keep it, keep it up here so that I, I have something to look at, um, uh, I want to improve my relationships with, with my wife, uh, I want to, I want my kids to do better in school, whatever it is that's important to you, I'm really to chant about it, but in Buddhism, we don't pray like begging pray, like, oh, please help me, help me. We say, I determined to win. I am determined.
to find the best job. I am determined to help my kids succeed. I am determined. It's a whole different kind of psyche. It takes a little while to get used to. It's not, you know, we're not begging. We're actually determining with our lives. Go home zone. Please help me to develop a strong life so that I can win. So I can be, be the best person that I can be. So that I can be happy today 100% and really truly enjoy every aspect of my daily life. That's what, we, you know, the, what we're really, really trying to, you know, uh, to get across. So uh, I want to close by just showing you uh, some of the publications that we have. What I did is I put in uh, these bags um, two books. One is called The Winning Life. Great little booklet, small, uh, large print. Um, um, uh, uh, it's only 20-something pages, so you could read it literally in 25 minutes. But it's great introductory theory that, you know, the stuff that we've talked about today. And then I also included uh, The Journey Begins, which is the first steps in Buddhist practice. Um, this is also um, a very good book, kind of tells you about, you know, making friends with people that practice and, you know, really staying plugged into the organization so that you can grow in faith and so forth. It's a really, really great book. So I'm going to hand these out to you guys. Thank you. Yes. And I gave these to you, you guys already, so I'm just going to get to And then, uh, Gary, <laughs> here you go. And uh, Lisa. Thank you. Um, so you can take those with you, and then and then we also have publications, um, which at some point you know you guys can get, which is uh, twelve times a year we get, which is called Living Buddhism, has great stuff in there, discussion topics, um, a, a, a monthly study, uh, a stud, study topic, guidance from our worldwide president, President Ikeda, um, you know guidance from President Ikeda, and same thing with our forty-eight time a year. Um, World Review newspaper. You have experiences from members uh, throughout the United States, um, news, um, guidance. Here's a woman, My Journey, the, my journey to Love Myself by uh, a Amy Lynn and Siciliano um, in Santa Monica, uh, California. How I learned that true happiness doesn't rely on anything or anyone outside of me. You know, so it's really inspirational where you can really plug in, you know, with the organization, attend meetings. You know, uh, get great encouragement. Deb is one of the, um, she received, received her to home zone about, how long has it been? May. May. And um, Deb's been ch uh, attending meetings, so, you know, just getting plugged in and attending meetings, getting publications and stuff, learning little by little. But I will tell you, it is a wonderful organization filled with compassionate people that are really willing to do, you know, I don't get paid for this, folks. I'm here because of you, you know. I want to help you guys become happy. So is there any questions that anybody has? And your Monday night meetings, you have them here? Yeah, yes, I do. Now, let me just explain the kind of the reality of the meetings. I always try to keep my house open to have meetings with anyone. Monday meetings um, are usually attended by just a few people, if, if, if any in some cases. And that's because there's really not a lot of members in our districts. All the districts in the SGI are usually smaller, smaller groups of 10 and 20 people, you know, in terms of, you know, active, you know, and, and participating um, in meetings at, at, a, at one location. So our main meeting is held once a month, and we are so far having it on Monday. So our big meeting of the month is this coming Monday, here at 7 o'clock. Um, that's our, our, our discussion meeting. So we choose a topic from one of the publications, and we actually discuss that topic. We chant, and we discuss that topic. Um, and um, then um, we also have a study meeting. Nichiren Daishonin actually wrote letters to his followers back in the, in the 1200s, and when he wrote those letters, they kept those letters preserved, and they translated them to English. So we study one of those letters every every single month. So we have two main meetings a month, and then I keep Mondays open for anything. So, for example, Patrick came, you know, week by himself. Great. Me and Patrick, we sat and we talked, and I explained to, to Patrick all about Buddhism. The next week, he brought Sandy, you know, and then I explained it to the both of them. So I am here for you. I am here to support you. I'm here to help you to achieve all your dreams and goals and become absolutely happy in this lifetime. That's what my goal is. So Monday nights, yes, are open every single week. But if you know in advance that you have a guest or something or you really want to get together to chant, let me know and I will definitely keep that day you know, open. And it's open anyway, but I'm just saying I'll keep, especially keep it open. I won't cancel it at the last minute so that I can get together and chant with you. Any other questions? When you are doing the chanting, is there just, you just chant until you feel like you're done? Uh, or is yeah, there, that's a really good, that's you know, an excellent like, question. How, do, how does that work? Okay. 
Uh, here's here's my China. suggestion to you. I'm kind of strict with my Deb, as Deb probably knows, right, Deb? Um, I'm kind of strict with my people that I the people that I introduce because I want people to get maximum benefit. Like in anything in life, you get out of it what you put into it. So, in my opinion, I would start out in the morning and in the evening, and any time in between, whatever hours work good for you. I know Kathleen has crazy hours. Yes. Kathleen, you work it into your schedule any which way that you can. Chant. 10 or 15 minutes in the morning and 10 or 15 minutes at night. If you can get a half hour Daimoku, or Daimoku, which is called Nami Horin Gikyo, if you can do that on a daily basis, that gives you at least a little foundation. And then at some point, you know, you attend a few more meetings and stuff like that, and I'll start teaching you Gongyo. In fact, we're so advanced, you can have a Gongyo CD that teaches you slow Gongyo, and it's also on the internet on sgi.org. Oh, that's the last thing I wanted to say. Uh, on, on the card that you have there, the Nam Yorangi Kill card, there's two websites, sgi.org and sgi-usa.org, which is the American website. On that website, under Member Resources, there are all kinds of uh, great information, so how to do slow gong yo, slow re recitation, fast recitation, <coughs> how to chant Nam Yorangi Kill. It's all out there, folks. I mean, everything, at you, you don't even need to walk home with any, any literature, and, and there's plenty of literature online to learn. Anything that you want to uh, about this practice and order stuff or supplies or whatever. Um, what was the point? I'm sorry. What was the question again? I lost my train of thought. How long? Yeah, how long? So what I would I would really really encourage you to chant as much as you can. If you're sincere, you want actual proof. Chant a half hour. Chant whatever you feel until you're sa the, the, the the old saying is chant till you're sa satisfied. But when you're new. It's kind of like you're trying to put your life in law. Remember, that this is the natural rhythm of the universe. In order to get in rhythm with the natural law of the universe, you have to chant Nam Yorm Gikyo. So you're putting your life in rhythm. So the more that you chant, the more in rhythm you're going to be. There's, it's, it's, there's, there's no secret. It's, there is a shortcut. Chanting more means more benefit. That, that, that's as honest as I can be. So 15 minutes in the morning in the, and 15 minutes at night. And then try to try to learn Gongyo, and it's never too early to learn Gongyo. So I'm more than happy to share one of these with you if you guys want to. I'm more than happy if anybody wants to, you know, take the next step and whatever. I have um, Gongyo books here. In fact, um, who, who likes here? I'll, I'll give you, I'll give these out to you guys anyway. Well, which color do you like? Uh, purple. Purple. Sure. Okay. Yeah. Green. Green. Okay. Who who who? Black, black. I only have black and purple left. Black. Black. Okay. Yeah, just just so they can get purple. And there's a there's a vowel and pronunciation. At least you could take them home and you know review them. Um, ah. well, what color would you like? Uh, black. Black. I like the black. It's sharp. Yeah, but I, I like the, the black. Also. Oh, you like the black? Okay. Yeah, yeah. So you can take those home with you. Um, and. Um, Go, go on, go on, go online for Gongyo so that you can actually play it. It's actually good to play it. And that's yeah. on this website. That that's on sg sgi-usa.org, okay. and it's also on sgi.org. Okay. It's on both 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 okay. websites. And just click and just click on and, and click on Gongyo, and you hear okay. and then you hear the I group chant group chant. It yeah, sure. sounds kind of weird when you hear that online, I was a little freaked out. I, I mean, I had already <laughs> yeah, been yeah, yeah. meeting with John, I knew what it was going to be like, but but it's a, it's just a different tone, and I felt really weird, but I, you know, you get used to it, and then, but I just wanted to let you know that. So yeah. you yeah. can chant along with that to help you I learn did. how to speak, that's what I yeah, need to do. They yeah. do it slow, and then they have it fast, okay. you know, you can choose, and, and it helps, um, I don't know, you get better. You, you know, get better with time. You get yeah. better. Yeah. It took my wife like 30 days, and once she was past 30 days, she was an expert. I mean, she wasn't doing it really, really fast, but she was just, the pronunciation was great, and to this day, she does an awesome gong yo. Um, it's called gong yo, G-O-N-G-Y-O, -G gong, gong yo, which uh, means I'm actually... I'm wondering why, they don't, why it's not translated to English. Is that to, because to, it doesn't You know what it actually means? Gong yo means, in Japanese, assiduous practice. So, so you know, most, Has anyone ever... Said the oh, actual, said, you know, like, no, 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 it's just not pretty, the same. Yeah, kind of. And, and that's the, what's funny, too, is that no matter what country you go to right now, Nam Yohar and Yikyo is what they chant. Mm -hmm. You won't hear anything different. There might be a little bit different sound, like yeah. the Spanish versus the yeah, you know, accent. people from Thailand. They'll have a little bit of different accent, but it's still Nam Yohar and Yikyo. It's just like the birds, right? Birds, 
have a universal language of their own. We don't understand it, right. but other birds do, right? So it's the same thing. Nami Harangi Kyo is the law of the universe. It's, it's universal. Anybody can chant Nami Harangi Kyo anywhere in the universe, and it, and it works. Um, any other last questions? For, oh, yeah, sure, please. Um, what should you think about when you're chanting? When you're chanting, you don't have to think about anything. Half the time I'm spacing out. I, I hate saying, <laughs> for the audience out there, please, you didn't hear that. But, um, you know, sometimes you don't, you don't really have to have anything in your mind personally. Uh, sometimes, you know, I'll be just chanting, focusing on the Gohon Zone. Um, uh, is, is that okay? All right. Um, here, on the Gohon Zone, you see there's kind of like a, a character that kind of has a swish in there. Mm -hmm. uh, it, it, that's the character Mio for Mystical. So when we chant to the Gohon Zone, I usually focus on the character Mio. Um, that's what we're encouraged. We always try to have the go home zone a little higher than our, our, our eyesight. So, for example, when I'm chanting, if you notice, yeah. I'm looking up at the go home zone. I'm kind of praising or I'm looking up. You know, you look up to something rather than look down to something. It's almost kind of condescending. <laughs> you know, you know. Um, so, um, anyway, that's, what, that's, what, that's uh, what we do. But you don't have to have any thoughts in your mind at all. What, I, what, what, what I'm saying is, is that some people will really, really space out and start, you know, staring at the walls and, and whatever like that. So if you have a list of things that you want to chant about, it gives you something to kind of focus on. You know, you know like, like what I'll do is I'll break it up. I'll, I chant for every member in my district, just like I'm going to be adding you, all of you today. Kathleen, you're already on from, from quite some time ago. And I'm going to chant and send Nam Yohar and to each one of you. I am. Thank you. And um, so I'm going to chant for your happiness. And so that gives me something. So I'll chant two minutes for Lisa, two minutes, you know, th that, that type of thing. And then I'll chant about my uh, career, career goals, you know, for a couple minutes. And, you know, so it keeps my mind busy and um, keeps me chanting. So you can, you don't have to have any, anything going on in your mind. So do you put that, you, do you say that to yourself before you chant what you're going to, what no, you're chanting for? No, I'm just thinking, for? just okay. thinking, just thinking. So you just mind. switch it up when yeah, you're... The hometown knows what's in your heart. Your heart says it all. Can I tell you what Patrick sure. and I decided sure, to do? Please. We created the 10 uh, things that we really want to focus on. Yeah. And as we say it, we look at one line. Then we say it again and we look at the next line. And we keep repeating that right. for a, a few minutes if we have a timer on. Oh, wow. And we, just, and we yeah. hold hands and we just look at each, each thing that's on our intention list, which I think is 10, right? I think so, yeah. yeah. So we wow. just look at it and we say it and then we look at yeah. it and we do it together. Well, just like in, in our prayers, in, uh, in, in the back of this book here, um, you'll see that there's uh, the five pra four prayers that we do on a daily basis. One's towards the front of the book that we do in the morning, and then the other three are in the back of the book. And uh, they're silent prayers. We do these silently to ourselves. We read them and, and, and chant. You, you can see it where you chant after you, re after you read the uh, uh, thing. So it's really your preference. If you want to say it aloud, there's no rules and rights, folks. You can do whatever you want. But what I'm saying is, is that Gohonzo knows what's in your heart. So even if you're not thinking about uh, your child's math test today, guess what's in your heart? Your child's math test today, right? Right. So Gohonzo knows. You don't, you, you don't have to be oh, yourself. Okay. The most important mm -hmm. thing is to be yourself when you're chanting. So find a nice, comfortable place in your, in your home, and you don't have to sit on the floor. In fact, all of us Buddhists pretty much in America sit in chairs. Sit in any comfortable chair that you have. Find a place on your wall, whatever that you want to, and, 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 and focus, uh, you know, find something, I guess, to kind of keep your attention and focus. If you're staring out a window, <laughs> watching cars go by, mm -hmm. maybe a little bit difficult to, you know, to keep focused. And you, you had another question? Yeah, um, you said that when you're chanting, you should be chanting it Verbally out loud? Or? Yes, you should verbalize okay. it, absolutely, because you want to vibrate your life. You want to really stir up that Buddha nature that's inside you. So, nam yo ho renge kyo, nam yo ho renge kyo. You can, you can chant fast, you can chant slow, really. It's not, you know, the present indicator talks about really chanting like a, you know, a galloping horse. Nam yo ho renge kyo, nam yo ho renge kyo. Um, but yeah, you want to, you want to chant out loud. If that do, you, do you ever find, you know, sometimes when I'm driving or chant, if I'm standing all the time in line at the grocery oh, store, okay. but obviously I'm not going to be doing right. it out loud. Well, <laughs> so again, the whole thing knows you can chant, yeah. you can chant certainly I'm in your head. saying it through your mind. Well, what I, I guess what I'm trying to say, is, and, and I'm not a Buddhist scholar by any means, but mm -hmm. the only thing I'm concerned about is, is that if you focus on chanting with your mind 
you're not going to raise your you're, you're not going to raise your life condition. Mm, okay. Yeah, you, you're you're going to have to focus most of the time on chanting. But yes, to some people, chant in their hearts. You know, they're in a, in a big important meeting. President Nikita even does it himself. You know, chants inside. You know, you're chanting silently yeah. to himself. Sometimes when I um, have an active mind, maybe some negativity or what have you, if I start just reciting that, my mind just goes to that. Yeah. And it stops all that. So like if I'm going to go to sleep at night, if there's a lot of things that happen during the day, and I just do the chant over and over, and I go right out. Wow. So it's, it's nice. So you can listen to it before you go to bed. Yeah. yeah. Do you can you do oh, Sorry. Oh, go ahead. <laughs> do you consider this a rel your religion? Yes, yes. It, it, it is a religion, but, you know, here, here's, here's my take. This is John Hayden's take, not the SGI. Is gravity a religion? No. Right. Is cause and effect a religion? No. It, it, it is in the sense that people believe that it's part of a religion, right? To me, the law of Nami Harin Kikyo is a law, just like gravity. It's a law, just like um, um, electricity. So it just is. So it is. So it is. If you want to call it a religion, fine. But well, I just don't want to mislead anybody right. and tell people it's not a religion. Because yes, it is an organized religion called the SGI. And there are other people that chant Nami Harin Kikyo that are part of a different organization, not in the SGI. But I will tell you now, this is true Buddhism. Don't think of any other type of Buddhism that you've thought of, meditative or otherwise, that is Nichiren Buddhism. This is the true teaching of Nami Harge Kyo. You have reached the highest teaching. There ain't no need to look left or right for something better because you found it right where you are. You will see that when you practice this philosophy and you will be a believer because it's going to work. It's going to work for anybody, anybody, anyone that tries it. So when you go on the website to get that chant, um, can you download it or can you? Oh no! Uh, d d if you want, I, like I said, I have um, I have a few. I don't of think you can. Can, can I play it in the, so I can play it in the car? Yeah. Okay. Well, that's where I started with the car. And it that, this, yeah. this is this is the um, the liturgy. This is the liturgy. The the gong yo. The gong yo. This isn't the Nami Harangi Kyo. Nami Harangi Kyo is on the website, but I don't really have that on, on a, a DVD. They probably do some chanting on. Who, who, did anyone? I can probably pull it up on my phone, so. Oh, okay. give it to somebody. Yeah, yeah, there's also. Chant, chant, oh, yeah, there's oh, chantbuddy.com. Chant. Chant. There's a <laughs> how long you chant, and it'll. Um, I think, does it remind you too, or something? Or? Some people actually chant to create campaigns for themselves. Uh, a lot of people do um, campaigns, like a um, million Daimoku campaign. Daimoku means chanting on Mihorangi Kyo. So what they'll do is they'll go to, uh, they'll look up Daimoku charts on, on, on the internet and download, you know, it's a picture with a one little square box. Each square box equals 15 minutes. So what they do is they make it a goal to chant a million Daimoku oh. over the course of six months or a year. And they have list maybe 10 goals that they want to accomplish. So for the next six months, I'm going to try to chant this million Daimoku, and here's the goals that I look to accomplish. So by the end of my six months, I hope that I can cross <laughs> off some of these, these, these you know, aspirations that I had. Does that make sense? Yeah. So you can go look up Daimoku chart on um, D-A-I-M-O-K-U um, on, the, on the web, and you can print one of those off so that you can have something to kind of like keep track of how much Nami Harin Kikyo you're chanting. Because remember, it's not important, Kathleen. You have a difficult schedule, so you fit it in any way that, you know, that makes sense for you. Right. Just like, you know, there's people who work mid-graveyard shift, right? And so they, you know, would, would want to do morning going, yeah, but they're getting home at uh, yeah. the time, and, you know. So you just, you just fit it into twice a day, mm -hmm. fit it into twice a day, and then um, any time in between, there's no, there's no rules of when you chant, when you don't chant. I chant all the time. I chant in the car all the time. All the time. If I'm even going so far as to the post office, I usually will do gongyo to energize my life. Why? I want to be happy. I want to be happy. I want to be happy. I want to have fortune. I want my kids to have fortune. So I chant as much Nami Horan Gikyo as I can. I chant literally an hour a day, every day. That's my goal. Never do. I almost never do less than an hour. That's my personal goal because that's what makes me really feel energized and, and positive. Any any other questions before we close? Are we going to go over the chat? The, the oh, oh, the chat. Did you want to chant one minute together? Yeah, yeah, that would be great. I would Give love that. Try. I would love that. Why don't we all chant together? Mm -hmm. so I'm going to open this up, okay? Oh, okay. Boy. Okay. <clears throat> okay, let's see here. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go all out here today. Who, who really, really wants to chant? Wow. 
So I've got black. <laughs> okay. Okay. If you have one. Oh, just, 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 okay. just, just take, take which one you want. Yeah, the, the, the beads. The beads are um, representative for our beads. Oh, can I borrow any of this? No, no, no. <laughs> no, no, that's, that's the way I am, folks. I, mean, I'm, I try, to help, try, try to help out new members. Okay, so these beads um, are a human body. They're just representative. They're not special powers. You wave them and, and you turn somebody into a frog. Um, basically, they're a human body. So you have the head, the two arms, and the two legs and I believe 108 earthly desires. And then there's other things up with these big ones, big beads, but to be honest with you, I, I totally forgot what it is. But, uh, so what we do is we take the three, I believe the three tassels on the right, I always forget, I've been practicing 30 years and I don't even know, on the right side, and I do a figure eight with it, like the, the, the inter eternity symbol. Mm -hmm. Is it eternity? Infinity. Infinity, infinity. I'm sorry, infinity. So you, you do, do that, and then you put it on your middle fingers. And then you just put your hands together. Put your hands about, about yay height, not in front of your mouth necessarily, which I do all the time. I'm guilty of it. You put your hands down about like this, and then um, and just chant. And, and just chant naturally. You can chant in any tone that you want to, but when we chant as a group, we usually try to harmonize with each other. Makes mm -hmm. sense, right? You want to kind of sound sound the same. So we'll chant. Oh, here you go. We'll chant for a couple of minutes. Yeah. You know what I'll do? I'll put this in the I'll put this in the uh, in the drawing. I'll put this in the drawing. Know how to say it? I don't know how to give away three. Yeah, there you go. Okay. Okay. Ready? We're all new, so we're all Okay. So when we when we when we when we start, we chant three times. Three times. No. Nam yo ho ren ge kyo 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 N